We would like to welcome you to this online worship service here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bellingham, Washington. As we gather together, we, of course, praise our God because of the many things that he has done. Not just many things, but he what has, kind of things? He's done great things, and that leads so beautifully into our first song. Um, come, let us worship the king. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. Please join us as we sing two wonderful songs, Great Things and My Feet Are on the Rock. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great.
gotta stand all over the ground is sinking sand. Stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all over the ground is sinking sand. Stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all over the ground is sinking sand. Stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. When I feel my heart. Kim, I noticed that as we come here today, you have your hair pulled back. Any reason why? I just got done walking Reggie and I pull my hair back so it doesn't get in my face and beautiful day to take a dog for a walk. Um, we've had some incredible days lately and it's, it's wonderful being able to go outside and enjoy the creation that God has provided for us. And what are some other things that you enjoy doing besides just walking our dog Reggie? Sometimes I take a book into the backyard and I read and I can hear the birds sing and the breeze blowing and it's lovely. I know you also enjoy gardening. Yeah, and you enjoy grilling. We do that outside. But as we go outside, there's also things that we have to be aware of. This past week, I slapped two mosquitoes. Usually I think of mosquitoes as a Midwest thing or on uh, the east side of the Rockies, but every once in a while they come here. But we also need to be aware of something else and that is actually the power of the sun. Yeah. We had our grandkids recently with us and we have to put sunscreen on them so they don't burn. You, we, we, we use a lot of sunscreen at this time of year. We protect ourselves because there's some danger out there. And as we look at the Bible, we realize that there's other things that can cause us danger, and that is sin. And sin is not to be taken lightly because it harms our relationship with God, with others, and sin can even harm ourselves. In the first lesson today, we hear about the fall of mankind, and Adam and Eve were tempted. They were tempted just like you and I. Unfortunately, they gave in to their temptation but this is something that we do daily as well. Sin is alluring, it's enticing, it, it draws us in. And as we gather here for worship, it's something that we acknowledge and we actually confess, God, we do fall. But as we come together, we also are given hope because even though we give into temptation, our savior Jesus did not. He stood firm, mm -hmm. not only did he stand firm against temptation, but we also are reminded he died for our sins. And because of that, we have life. Life now and life forever. Something we'll be talking about later on in the service. But as we live our lives here, we do have joys for which we thank God, but we also have concerns. And so at this time, we invite you to join us as we pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for having mercy on us, even when we rebel against you. We are so grateful that you sent us your dear son to free us from the devil's tyranny. Strengthen all who are baptized to do your will, speak your word, care for your people, and live as true sisters and brothers of your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to defeat the forces of evil which torment and which seek to destroy your church. Gather in your care all who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus as the Lord. Soften the hearts of their enemies so that they repent and strive to do your will. Help all of us to stand firm when our faith is put to the test. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, 
We ask that you strengthen bonds of affection, respect, and care in all families. Heal those that are afflicted by discord, abuse, grief. Help us to believe that in loving you, our Heavenly Father, we also draw closer to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Equip those who stand in harm's way on behalf of others with courage, wisdom, and skill. Bless all that they do, which is in line with your will. Shield them when they fall and give patience to those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember before you all who suffer. Refresh them with the healing power of your life-giving spirit. Help us to minister to them with compassion and patience. Restore them to fellowship with all who love them. Today, we specifically lift up to you, Barb, Alberta, Alice, David, Mike, Henry, Priscilla. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this day, we also pray for Trinity, as it is in the process of of looking to call another staff person. We ask that you would open up doors, working in the hearts of, of those whom we are considering so that the ministry here may flourish. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, dear Lord as it is best for us and glorifies your holy name. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the third chapter of Genesis. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson comes from 2 Corinthians. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, 
not built by human hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the third chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The other day, my wife and I took a walk, and as we were walking, we came upon some Canadian geese who were by a pond. As we approached the pond, we saw an adult pair of geese stand up and, and waddle into the water. And when the adults did that, there were five goslings, which stood up basically about the same time and followed the adult pair into the water. And they swam where the adults were going. It was so cute. Actually, it is something that my wife and I have seen many times before, goslings following their parents. They have actually a word for it, for geese. It's called imprinting. Goslings will, will focus on one of the first large things they see and follow it. Now, usually it is their mother, but at times it can be other things, such as a person or another animal. That's what goslings do. They see something and they follow it. And to one degree or another, that's what we as humans do as well. And so as we gather here today, the question I have for you is, who or what do you follow? It can be maybe your parents, other people, or maybe it is your ambitions, your hopes, your dreams. At this time of the year, there are many commencement exercises which are, are being um, performed or given. And at these exercises, oftentimes you have speakers encouraging the graduates to follow your dreams. We live in a world, of course, where there are many possibilities when it comes to what we will follow. Yet among the possibilities that are out there, Christians, that is, you and I, are to, above all, follow Jesus. Even though we cannot see him or touch him, we follow Christ. This means that we listen to him, we take notice of what he says, we believe the promises which he has made, and we model our lives after him, with, of course, the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. This does not mean as we follow Christ that we are oblivious to what is happening in this world. Following Christ doesn't mean that we will never experience trials or tribulations, but it does mean that we will see things differently. This is something that we need to remember because in this life, we will struggle at times. Now in the New Testament lesson for today, St. Paul encourages us to stand firm in our faith. And how we do that is by focusing on the things which are unseen, which to me, it reminds me of Jesus and all that he has won for us. Listen again to what St. Paul wrote. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being, re being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In some ways, as we read this passage of Scripture, it seems that St. Paul contradicts himself. How can you fix your eyes on something which you cannot see? How can we do that? Well, the answer is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes how we perceive things. I think of the first disciples, Peter, James, John, as well as the others, along with St. Paul, to whom Jesus appeared. They saw Jesus after he had died of crucifixion. They knew that he was not a ghost. He had flesh. He had blood. He, he was able to eat. And that is something that they just could not keep quiet about. The disciples traveled everywhere and even went to their deaths declaring that Jesus Christ had been raised from the dead. And that has implications because it means that there is more to life than what we see now. 
Yes, we live in a world of sight and sound. We live in a world where we can experience great joy as well as great sorrow. But this world will come to an end. We will come to an end. But there is another world and an age coming and one that will last forever. Because of this, St. Paul encourages us as we live our lives to focus on Jesus. This helps us so that we will not be, as one person described it, um, spiritually nearsighted. So let's look at, at how sometimes we can fall into that sin or temptation of being spiritually nearsighted. To begin with, I have to say that this is a danger which is present all the time. It means that we lose sight, not just of Jesus, but of his resurrection and the eternity which he has prepared for us. We focus just on what is happening in the world today. Yes, there are many people who are nearsighted. They have no vision for what is coming. They only focus on, on this world. They may focus on the good things of this world, or they may focus on the bad things that are happening in this world. Think about it. For some, their focus is, is on the thrills that this world brings. Their nearsightedness makes them only think about those things. And so they, they look forward just to their vacations, to the next shopping trip, or to the next new gadget which is gonna come on the market. That is what they live for. That becomes central to their lives. You may say it becomes their idol. I would like to talk actually a little bit about idols. It's important to remember that God warns us against making anything into an idol or warns against idolatry. Now, idolatry really means making something more important in our lives than God. Now, usually when we think of an idol, we may think of, of a carved piece of, of stone, maybe something of precious metal or a piece of wood. It is, it is also helpful for us to understand that any good thing that we have here on earth can become an idol for us. Our hearts can turn something which is good, such as love of family, enjoyment in life, the blessings of this life, even our job, into the ultimate thing. And when the good things in our life become the ultimate things, the things that we ultimately live for, then they become, in essence, our idols, our gods. They are the things that we put our hope and trust in. Those are the things that we seek to, to find fulfillment in. And to one degree or another, we are all guilty of it. We lose sight of God and we focus on the blessings which he has given to us. Again, we can describe this as being spiritually nearsighted. Yes, God does want us to enjoy the things that he has given us in life and to be grateful for it. But the Lord reminds us never to let this life and the things of this life become your sole focus. Fix your eyes on Jesus as well as the unseen things which God has in store for you. I also mentioned that there's another danger for people who are spiritually nearsighted. It is not that they just focus on the good things, but actually just the opposite. They focus on the bad things which are happening in this world. And it actually can be very depressing, but it's easy to slip into. When you are in pain or anguish, or when you see other people struggling, this can lead to despair and doubts about God's goodness. A question that I hear every once in a while is this. Why is God allowing this to happen to me at this time? I've heard that question when someone has been diagnosed with cancer or some other um, critical illness. I've heard that question stated when there has been a hurricane which has devastated an area or a wildfire which has come and taken away all the possessions of, of someone. I've heard that when relationships have been torn apart, when there's been a divorce, 
or when parents have been estranged from their children. Now, I can't read God's mind. I can't always perceive why God allows certain things to happen and why he allows other things not to happen. I don't even know what's going to happen next in my own life, whether it's going to be filled with joy or with pain and sorrow. But St. Paul gives us something that can help us at those times when we might want to become spiritually nearsighted because of either the bad or good things happening in the world or in our own life. St. Paul points us to Jesus. And as we look at Jesus, there's much to see. First of all, there is no one who has suffered more. He not only suffered physically through his betrayal, through his torture, and through his death by crucifixion. The Bible makes it very clear that God had placed upon him all the sin and the punishment for sin on him as he hung on the cross. The writer to the Hebrews has an interesting statement as he speaks about the cross. It reminds me of what St. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians. He writes, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. I love this passage of scripture because it reminds us that Jesus had the correct spiritual sight. Christ endured the cross because he saw what was beyond the cross. As Jesus lived here on earth, I'm sure he experienced happiness as he was with his family and as he was with his disciples. But he also knew that there was more to life than what we have here. Eternity lay ahead for mankind. And in order for heaven to be opened up for you and me and for all other people, the barrier which would stop us from getting into heaven had to be removed. That barrier was our sin, our spiritual nearsightedness, as well as our, our sin of idolatry when at times we put other things before God. They had to be wiped away. Jesus had to suffer, die, and rise again. And because of his work for us, those things are now removed for all who trust in Jesus. That means that heaven is opened up to us. As we trust in Jesus, our future is bright no matter what happens here on earth, whether it is filled with joy or there are struggles, pain, and sorrow. Fixing our eyes on Jesus and on the unseen things of Jesus helps us then also deal with life. When we suffer, we're reminded that suffering is always only for a time. But eternity is forever. Therefore, we wait patiently as we bear our burdens and as we, we seek relief through our prayers, as well as through others who may help us, whether they may be doctors, nurses, or therapists. Also, fixing our eyes on Jesus moves us to help those who are in need. We can take time out of our lives to help out others because we realize that life is more than what we get out of it. We realize that God has placed us here on earth for a purpose. And that purpose, of course, is to love him and to love one another. Our lives not only have a purpose, but we have meaning as we live out our lives. Also, fixing our eyes on Jesus helps us to keep things in perspective. We enjoy family and friends. We give thanks for all the good things that we have in life. And I pray, actually, that you will be able to enjoy many things this summer. But with God's help, we never seek to make the good things of this earth the ultimate things in our lives. The things of this world and the people of this world make actually horrible gods. They cannot save us, and sooner or later, they will be taken away from us. But Christ is there forever.
So if there's ever anyone we are to follow, it is Jesus. I spoke about how goslings imprint upon on their parents or at times upon people or maybe even other animals. It's what goslings do. As we look at the Bible, I want you to see how God has always had his eye focused on us. It's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. He did it for you and me. And it's because God has always had his eye on us that we seek to have our eyes on him. Yes, we imprint upon our Savior. We never forget what he has done for us. We listen to him. We believe in him. We worship him. And by the grace of God, we also follow him into eternity. Amen. As we continue our service, we invite you to pray along with us the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. song we sang, Never Let Go, from VBS about two years ago. Our kids learned amazing songs, and as a church family, we learned some of these songs as well, and that was one of them. Uh, VBS is coming. We are planning a wonderful time the last full week in July. Registration is required. We're doing preschool through fifth grade, sixth grade, somewhere in there. And if you have a child, a grandchild, or a neighbor, encourage them to come and be part of this, but they have to register ahead of time. We need you, we need the whole village to make this a success, and we ask you to join us. And until we see you again face to face, may God bless you. <laughs>